I'm here with designer and author Kate Richberg, and Kate is known for her metal work, and these are some beautiful beads you're making, Kate. Thank you. This was actually my very first metal project when I first started to do metal. Look at you go. Well, and it's so easy, anyone can do it, so I'm so excited to share it with you. Oh, great, and we're talking about color today, and you're actually using the torch to create patina. That's right. You know, you can patina with traditional techniques as well, but I love to use the torch for patina ink. Oh, I can't wait to see. All right, so to start the beads, what I use is some thin gauge sheet metal. This is 36 gauge copper sheet, but again, you could use sterling silver as well. Um, but this 36 gauge is nice and thin, so you can really move the metal and wind, you know, roll up those beads. Okay. So after I cut my shape using some metal shears, and you know, don't worry about the shape that you're making. Whatever shape you like, I kind of have this vaguely triangular shape here. I go ahead and I use my flat nose pliers and I come in and I just bend up the edges like so and you know what they don't have to look pretty they just have to be bent you're just folding them in to prevent snags right to keep it clean right so it's nice and clean and not too sharp okay and then I just come in and push it down with my fingers and then give it a final little burnish with the tip of the tool Great. just like that then once it's uh, all finished into a shape, I go ahead and I get my dowel. This happens to be a knitting needle, but you could use a dowel or anything you want. Just remember that the size of the dowel you use is going to be the interior um, of the bead. That's the, the interior size of the hole. Okay, so you might think about if you're going to put this on a chain or on stringy material. Right, exactly, how big you want that hole to be. And you can see already I've just wound that up. Now see how this side, it's a little bit open or a little bit big here, I can use my plier to come in and, you know, kind of just twist it. Yeah, down. twist it down or, you know, that's what freeform is all about. You decide what it is um, that you like there. So I like it. The more crumpled, the better, I think. Sure. That looks great. So now let's add the color. Okay. We're going to do that by using a torch. So we're going to put right. on our safety glasses. Okay. And I just use a uh, butane micro torch. We want to use this in a well ventilated area safety glasses and of course a fire extinguisher near but as I turn on the torch and I just come right down and I start heating the metal now the heat of the torch is going to make the metal start to patina and copper starts oh, to look patina at that. look at that on the cool down of the metal you can start to see the color and if I wanted it really dark I'd come in and just keep going with the uh, with the flame, just heat it and heat it. And you now, can do see. you have to worry about doing this too much? You know, well, you don't want to heat uh, the metal so much that you melt it. But as long as you're moving the torch around like this and not holding it in one place, you're going to be fine. And you're working on the kiln brick to protect your work surface. Exactly, the kiln brick is my solder surface of choice. Now, this is really hot, so I'm going to pick it up very uh, gently with my soldering tweezer. And you can see the back is also patinaed right. because you know the because metal is conductive. Hot. Right, exactly. I'm going to come in and quench it. Now you can see, I know I love that noise, it's great. right? It's great. You can see that the patina, uh, it's colored a little bit, you know, and it's just kind of what you, yeah. what you get. Right. And it's not perfectly even and that's okay. Oh, exactly. And I think that e makes it even look better for the bead. Definitely. Now, once I dry this off on my trusty work apron, uh, I can come in and give it just a quick buff if I feel like with a little metal, um, a little metal pad. This is a little 3M metal pad, or I can use some fine gauge sandpaper or a pro polish pad, or I can just leave it at a size. So you're just sanding it a little bit to bring out some highlights. Right. Exactly. And you don't need to polish this at all or anything. No, no. So now okay. we're going to add some more color with the beads. Yay! So I've just cut some um, pre-oxidized wire here. And this is maybe a little longer than 18 inches, maybe about 22 inches or so. But, you know, it just depends on how much wire you like to use. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start wrapping. I hardly think about what I'm doing. I just think about other things and wrap, wrap away. away. Exactly. And you can just add your little beads for color. And you can add one single bead and wrap around. 
you could add a couple of beads. You know, whatever strikes your fancy, it's a great way to kind of use up the remainder of your beads in your bead box. Sure, this is a great stash project, you know, using all the beads up, leftover bead soup and exactly. that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, do you make sure that the beads are on one surface or it just depends on what you're going to no, use it for? No, it just for? depends on what you're going to use it for. Um, I can go ahead and wrap some beads around the back like this as well. And, you know, I can make it heavier on one side if it's going to be a pendant, or I can just do it all the way around. But to finish it off, it's really easy. Just these little ends. I'm going to tuck this, find a space in your wire that's maybe uh, lifted up a little bit, and I can just wrap this end around once. And you're just sort of stitching it down there. Exactly, and pulling it and is nice this 24 and gauge? It is 24 gauge, okay. but I can use a 24 gauge, 26 gauge, even 28 gauge works nicely. Okay. I'm going to give it a final tug here, and then I'm just going to clip that little end away using my wire cutter. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing here. It looks great. It's so two different ways to add the color. Exactly. Patina and beads. And the beads. One last little trick I want to share with you. This is one that I've already finished. You can see to tighten up the wires, I can just come in and give them a little half twist, and that kind of brings all of the wires in uh, where you want it to be. Up. Yeah, oh, exactly. these look great. Let's take a look at the red necklace here, because here you can see the patina with no beads. Yeah. And then on the other stone necklace in the front here, you can see the patina on sterling silver. That's right, and you know, I use the torch to patina sterling silver as well. Oh, they're just gorgeous. Let's take a quick look at your necklace that you yeah. created. This is this is a bead I made so long ago, and I really wear it Old quite favorite. a bit. That's right. Oh, thank you so much for sharing it with oh, us. Oh, it's my pleasure, Katie. Thank you. And stay tuned for another great project.